And joining us right now is James Quincy, chairman and CEO of the Coca-Cola Company, someone who's got his pulse on the global consumer in a way that few do. James, it's great to see you this morning. I um, want to start with this. About a month ago, uh, when you were reporting, you were talking about volumes uh, being down about 25 percent. Uh, that was about 30 days ago. How does it look right now? Uh, yeah, we're still seeing uh, in May uh, uh, globally negative volumes. Uh, they are a little bit better than they, than they were in April, uh, principally driven by the degree of lockdown. There, there are some markets where the lockdown is being eased. It's not fully open but it's not as locked down as it was. And so we're seeing uh, some improvements uh, in countries where the lockdowns are coming up, but still still quite negative versus prior year. Uh, very early days uh, in the reopening phase. To the degree that, that your experience in China uh, may offer us a little bit of a, a path forward, what are you seeing there, not just in terms of the supply chain, and we'll get to that in a moment, but in terms of the way the consumer is behaving, but again, it, uh, I imagine it goes to some of the social distancing and other requirements uh, that are in place there. Yeah, a couple of effects in China. I mean, clearly uh, things have improved in China from, uh, from a demand point of view. There, where there is social distancing, of course, it is uh, meaning that sales in those channels are not back to the sorts of levels they were pre-crisis, uh, pre, pre the virus. Uh, I think the other thing that we're still trying to gauge uh, in places like China and globally is you've got a big inventory effect, which wouldn't be uh, normally uh, something to really worry about at a global level. But when the lockdowns occur, uh, shop retailers stop buying um, and still keep selling to some degree. So when the, when the reopening starts, there's a restocking phase. So we, we are certainly being cautious uh, where sales are, are, are looking uh, like they're improving, as to try and understand how much is the consumer and how much is restocking. And I think for manufacturers like us, we're going to of consumer products, we're going to see, we're going to need to see uh, some more months, uh, at least some more weeks go by before we can really gauge uh, what the consumer is doing. But it certainly looks like uh, in a place like China, where frankly, we, in February we were down ninety percent, uh, that we're coming back uh, in May, even though not to pre-crisis levels yet. What percentage of the business is grocery versus restaurants versus events, stadiums and the like? How would you break that down? Yeah, for, the clo for Coca-Cola globally, the simplest way to look at it is about half of our business is the, all the collection of uh, at home where you buy and you consume at home. And half of our business is away from home, uh, principally restaurants, cafes, on the go outlets and Stadiums are, are a smaller piece of that, but there is a whole series of channels um, uh, that add up to away from home. But in total, it's about half of our business, and that's the bit that's been most impacted by the lockdown. So the effect of the lockdowns is very concentrated uh, on the away from home channels. Uh, there's some improvement at, in at home and the e-commerce that goes with at home, but not nearly enough, as we, as we pointed out in our April uh, update. Uh, not enough to compensate for the away from home sales that we're losing. Uh, James, uh, historically, Coca-Cola has been one of the largest global advertisers in, in the world. And that, of course, has a trickle down effect uh, when, in fact, uh, you stop advertising or you slow advertising. Speak to that in terms of how you're thinking about marketing, what that marketing spend looks like and maybe what kind of channels you plan to use in the future. And if that shifts. Yeah, in the very short term uh, of the second quarter, we made a decision that uh, a lot of that money was going to be ineffectively spent. And, and frankly, uh, some of that resource it needed to be redirected uh, at helping uh, in all the community actions. We spent well over $100 million uh, in community support actions around the world. So we wanted to have less advertising, one, because we didn't think it would work from a financial point of view, and two, just as importantly, we thought, it would be tone deaf uh, in the heart of the crisis. Uh, so we came down very drastically uh, in the second quarter. As we look uh, to the second half uh, and into 2021, clearly we're going to start to uh, do more marketing activities. Um, uh, we'll see uh, some channel shifts. Uh, clearly what we're going to uh, uh, also be focusing on it on that is, you know, where does reactivation need to occur? We're going to be spending marketing dollars to help bring uh, the away from home channels back up, 
Uh, we're going to have to recognize that coming after this virus crisis will be the economic impact uh, and hangover of, of the lockdown. And there'll be a much greater focus by consumers on affordability um, and getting the price points lower. So our marketing will shift both in terms of where we advertise and, and what we're trying to support, the behavior we're trying to support, and uh, understanding that there's going to be a different uh, consumer uh, out-of-pocket money uh, reality uh, for some period of time. And the other question I was going to ask is you have prioritized what you call your core brands during this, this period. What happens to all of the other brands that you were trying to build? I've become an addict of the AHA, that's how you pronounce it, right? AHA uh, sparkling water. But I imagine that was a new brand for you. So it's probably not going to be getting the same kind of marketing attention, nor the same kind of shelf space that it might have in your plans just three or four months ago. Uh, good news for you is the, that AHA will be. We're, we're very pleased uh, with, uh, with how that's gone, even uh, in the crisis. The, the simple reality in the short term is uh, for the retailers uh, in the middle of the lockdown, uh, they needed to focus on less SKUs to keep the supply chain running. With all the complications of running their operations around the world from big small stores to small stores, they needed fewer SKUs. And that naturally leads all the manufacturers to pull back on the innovation. You can't really engage with the consumers to tell them about it, and it clogs up the supply chain. So we, I think many others, focused in on the core brands and the core package sizes to make the supply chain run uh, around the world uh, and for the retailers. And that was really important thing to do in the lockdown, to make sure we didn't uh, run out of food and beverages around the world. Um, as we look forward, clearly we'll be bringing back the innovation. Um, uh, it's it's going to be tougher. There's going to be a kind of recessionary environment. So we have gone and we are going through a process of prioritizing which of the innovations did we uh, really think were starting to work at the beginning of this year and continue to back them uh, in the rest of the year, our help being one of them. Which are the ones that, uh, you know, for prioritization, we're not going to do in the second half of the year, this year. Maybe we'll keep them to next year. And there'll be some where we'll decide the mood uh, and the way the world is going in the next 12 months, that innovation is no longer the right thing. I mean, it seems um, a very long time ago, January, uh, sitting here today, and, and the mood has changed. And, and so some of those innovations need to be part uh, and, and kept, kept in the draw for another year. Um, going back to stadiums to some degree, but I'm thinking more broadly in terms of sports, uh, you have sponsored uh, lots of different sports leagues including the NBA and Olympics and so many other things. What kind of conversations are you having uh, with the leagues, with the television networks, either about pulling money back, pushing them to go forward and press ahead with or without people in the audience? Does that make those sponsorships to you less valuable? How are you guys, how are you managing through that? Uh, abs absolutely tricky, very tricky. I mean, clearly there's a couple of effects here. Uh, we, we have these sponsorships with multiple uh, sports events, stadiums. Actually, there's a, there's a whole series of things, concerts, et cetera, et cetera, which are not going to be able to go ahead, at least in the way uh, that they were envisaged uh, a few months ago. And, and we're going to have to have the conversation. We are having the conversations with them about, you know, how are they thinking about going ahead? How are they applying? Uh, the necessary government and medical guidelines. What are they imagining uh, they're going to do in terms of uh, uh, whether they're going to have the events, not have the events, have them in a different way, and, and what that means to the sponsors. And, of course, we, like uh, many other sponsors, will be there going, okay, so what's, what's the new deal? How can, we, uh, how can we manage through this together? I'm sure in the long term, uh, many of these will be still fantastic uh, properties, and there's a lot of things we can do together uh, in partnership. Uh, but we do have to we do have to cross the bridge to get there, and in some in some cases that'll mean uh, renegotiations. It's it's a new reality. Um, uh, everything's been shaken up, and we have to prioritize the, the money we spend uh, where it'll where it'll be effective. So I think there will be uh, there will be changes coming um, uh, in the coming months as, as 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 we work through these problems. Um, separately, uh, you, your, your headquarters is the great state of Georgia. Georgia has moved to reopen, was one of the, was one of the first to reopen. Can you just speak to, to your own personal experience on the ground? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, Georgia um, has has loosened up some of, of parts of the lockdown, not the whole not the whole thing. And of course, like many other states and actually many other parts of the world, uh, the local cities uh, also have a, a role to play in their own sets of rules. Uh, we in our large complex uh, in Atlanta uh, are still prioritizing um, that uh, the people that go to the complex are those whose jobs most depend on being there, lab technicians, uh, other sorts of jobs which are really uh, uh, very dependent on being the location and keeping everyone else working remotely, uh, as many as we can. Um, and we certainly see that running uh, through the summer. At the end of the day, even those um, places where lockdown is being eased, they're still asking to maintain social distancing. And the best the way that we can achieve that uh, for the safety of our employees and everyone else who comes to the complex is to prioritize those people who most need to be there uh, and to ask the rest uh, to maximize the amount of time they're still working from home. So we still see a very extended period of time with this uh, duality um, and a low occupancy in our offices so that we can uh, promote physical distancing. Um, and, and I think that reality is going to carry forward uh, for some period of time, uh, even as the kind of the hard lockdowns ease. And we right. see that around the world. Uh, we only have a very few offices um, almost as open as they were uh, prior to the crisis. Most of them are in this phase uh, of low occupancy so that we can prioritize those that most need to be there. Hey, James, um, we only have about 30 seconds, but real quick, do you see a dis given what you're saying, which seems to be a, a longer timeline than a lot of people are thinking about, do you see a disconnect between the markets, if you will, and the real economy in terms of where you see the world 12 months from now? Uh, we're, we're very focused. We, we looked at every crisis that we've been in for 134 years, and we know we've emerged stronger from every single one ahead of GDP recovery. Uh, but I'm very uh, much of the view that this is going to be a U or more of an extended U recovery than a V recovery. Uh, and and where the markets may be anticipating some time ahead, but on, on the ground in the economy, uh, there are a lot of people who are on unemployment or on furloughs in, on the European schemes. The economic impact of the lockdown is just starting to begin. And we do see a protracted adjustment coming along. We will emerge strong from that. We always have. Um, but that's what we see ahead.